Hello and welcome back to Warp Painters Warp Crafts. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to make this display base using paper mache and foam. So let's go! So we're going to start the build with this piece of XPS foam cut to about 10 by 20 cm and I'm going to combine it with this coffee cup holder that I got from our last takeout. Okay, so no need to be too precise with this, just lay the cup holder on the foam Mark out the areas which you'll need to trim and then go at it with a pair of scissors. Just make sure that you're safe and you're not snipping at your fingers. Next, grab some scratch papers and just fill in the inside cavity of that cup holder. This will make it a more solid piece, especially after you lay the glue and water on it. Now, secure that onto the foam with a bit of masking tape. Just put in as much as you need to to make sure it's not moving around. With the cup holder secure, we're going to start to lay on the scratch papers and the masking tape on top of that. Now this will start to give our piece the shape of the hill that we're aiming for. So just lay it on in alternating layers, put in as much masking tape and papers as you want or need. And then, you know, massage the piece a little bit just to give it a little bit more of an organic shape. Now, as you'll see, the shape of our hill is very rough at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it look more organic using some more paper mache. So just mix up one part PVA glue with one part water. Get some tissues. Now you can tear them or you can cut them. Dip them in the mixture and lay them on one by one on top of the existing piece. Now you can use a brush to help you shape the tissues onto the hill. What you'll notice is that the glue and the water mixture will bind all of our materials together and at the end of it, it's going to make it look like one single monolithic piece with great rough texture. So just continue to lay on the tissues dipped in the mixture using your fingers and alternating between your fingers and the brush. Massage the piece a little bit to make it softer, uh, give it that more organic look. And once you're done, you're going to have to set this aside to dry. Now, four hours is usually okay, but just to be sure, I like to leave it overnight. And that'll give the glue and the water some time to really set and make the piece monolithic. So after leaving the piece overnight, you now have this gigantic cake looking thing and what you can do now is start to add details depending on what you intend your diorama or your scattered terrain to be. Uh, for this project I was intending it to be a hill on the side of the road. So I'm laying on some pure strength PVA glue and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to lay bricks uh, on the PVA glue. Now because we're working with foam and paper, uh, I, I don't really have to use super glue. I can use PVA glue and the good thing about that is that it doesn't set as quick as super glue and you can really play around with the details that you're adding on it uh, while it's still wet. So here are the bricks. I've started laying it on in a semicircle shape. Uh, I'm putting them in one by one because I really want to have those little spaces in between. Uh, I'm intending to paint this later on like a muddy road, so there's going to be a lot of dirt in between that. So just uh, take your time with this and fill in the details. Now in the next bit, 
I am now using super glue because I want these rocks to be set uh, really quick into the piece. And you notice I'm still using XPS foam. I've just snipped at the uh, different parts of it and just to give it really that jagged shape. So I'm attaching it, just letting the super glue set for a little bit. Super glue really cooks the foam and makes it stick so much onto whatever surface you're attaching it to. So just lay on the rocks, you know. No need to be too precise about this. Just uh, scatter them around where you imagine, you know, maybe the figures will be. Okay, so a little bit of glue, push it in, let it set for about 10 seconds, and you're good. So just keep doing this, filling in all the details that you want to put in uh, to your satisfaction. As you notice, I've also added a signboard on the side just to give it more of that road-like feels. And that's it. This will be good for painting next. Okay, so with the glue dry, let's now prepare the uh, piece for painting. Uh, I'm mixing in some flat minis varnish or flat top coat and some water. Okay, so I'm using a local brand called Armored Komodo. We have we do have a bunch of local brands of uh, mini paints and varnishes here in the Philippines. Okay, so now I'm adding in a little bit of water, but I really don't want this mixture to be too thick. I'd like it to be runny, uh, because I want it to get into all the nooks and crevices of the piece. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more of water to this. There we go. I am at a consistency now that I'm happy with. Okay, so mix it in a little bit more. So here's our piece, the glue is dry, and then just lay it on there. Okay, so what this will do is it will, one, seal all of our components together, okay, bind them all together. And it will also, secondly, give our paint a more even texture to latch onto. So just, you know, grab your brush and just lay it onto everything. Make sure you get every nook and cranny of your piece. Okay, so after that dries, it's time to uh, paint up the piece. I will start with some brown primer. Give it a good shake and just uh, squeeze it out onto my mixing container here. Then add in a little bit of brown pigment powder. It's brown, but uh, it's a different shade of brown. So just a disclaimer, I am not a paid endorser. I'm not a paid endorser of these brands I'm using. I just use them out of preference. They're local brands here in the Philippines. Okay, now I'm also going to add a little bit of the coffee grounds from last time. So this is going to give it some nice, really strong, grainy texture. Right, so put in a good bit there. Okay, so next let, let's put in some PVA glue. PVA glue will help secure the coffee grounds onto the display piece that we're making. Just a bit, a little more. All right, so that, that, that's good enough. And then top that all off with some water. Okay, so I've got my uh, stick here, just uh, mix it all together. It's gonna give you this nice creamy mixture. It's really gonna be thick because of all the powder and the uh, the, the uh, primer in there. Okay, just so give it a good mix, make sure you get all of the components together, okay? Take your display piece, take your brush. If you've got any excess primer, just you know, rub it onto the piece. You want to maximize all of the materials you can get out of this. And then just really take the brush and just dab it on. Uh, it's coming out a little thick at the moment, but again, th since the mixture is largely made up of water and glue, 
once this dries, it's gonna all even out and you're not gonna have to worry about missing details. Okay, so just continue to lay our mixture onto the piece, making sure you get every corner of it. Uh, you may not be able to get everything all in one go or on one layer, so you can actually do, you might have to do two or three layers for this. Huh? And with the succeeding layers, you can start to use a smaller brush, uh, depending on how much left you need to cover. So for smaller details, smaller bits where, you know, the paint just won't go in the first time, just use a smaller brush to, uh, stick it in there okay so i won't be going into the full details of how i finished this piece there are a lot of other tutorials you can check out for that but i did go on to just add a little bit more greens a little bit more browns a little bit of reds also just to give the mud those layers uh the rocks i just painted bluish gray just to help them stand out from the the rest of the terrain okay and then what I'm going to do at the end of the video is I'm going to share the finished piece. Uh, and at the same time, you can check the links where you will find the finished diorama. Uh, it will be entitled The Battle of Bywater, uh, which is what this piece was intended for. So thank you for watching another one of Warp Painter's Warp Crafts. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, do click like, share, and subscribe for more of my content.